So I've been dispatched to a 26 year old male, um, chief complaint, shortness of breath. Uh, it's been reported he was surfing beforehand before he had the shortness of breath. Hello, um, my name's Reese. I'm from the ambulance service. Yes, come in. Come in? Cool. Um, as I walk in the door, I'm just checking that the scene is safe. It doesn't look like there's any stray dogs that could attack me or anything like that. Uh, I'm almost say also taking this opportunity to have a look and get a general impression of the patient um, to sort of see what position the patient's in and any sort of dire straits to confirm how dangerous and life-threatening this scenario is. How you going, mate? My name's Reese. Hey, what's your name? Uh, Reese as well. Reese is your name? Alright, oh, Reese. Reese squared. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so what seems to be the problem today, Reese? Uh, shortness of breath, mate. Shortness of breath? Yeah, just coming from surf and I've <clears throat> really struggling to breathe. Yeah, okay, no worries. Um, as I can see here, the patient's currently seated in a tripod position. Um, I can see the patient is also struggling with a shortness of breath. Um, primary survey has been conducted. The patient's alert, told me his name is wherever he is. So he's got GCS of 15. Airway's currently clear with no life-threatening occlusions. Patient's breathing with some struggle, um, assisted by the tripod position. and circulation, the patient looks well perfused. Doesn't look pale or diaphoretic in any way. Um, all right, Reese. so you've caught us here because you've got a um, shortness of breath here. Yeah. Uh, have you got any previous medical history, Reese? Uh, I have asthma. Asthma? Mm. All right, do you take any medications for that, Reese? Um, Just a puffer. Just a puffer, <clears throat> a bit of Ventolin? Yeah, yeah. All right, and you're you allergic to anything, Reese? Uh, not that I know of, no. No allergies, no, so we've no got allergies. asthma, we're on Ventolin, and um, you're not allergic to anything. Have you got an asthma plan in place? I've got nothing. No. Nothing at all? Mm. Okay, no worries. Um, Cool. Also, Reese, are you aware, um, do you currently have any oxygen therapy program in place or anything like that? No, I can't no, see no. any oxygen tanks anywhere nearby. No, nothing in place. All right, no worries. Um, what I might do now is, Reese, I might just check your um, pulse oximeter. So I'm just going to put this peg pulse oximeter on your finger here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to check your heart rate. That's going to take about 60 seconds. Um, are you okay with that? You comfortable with how you're sitting? You're all right with that? Yeah, I feel good. Sweet, no worries. It's going to take about 60 seconds. So. The reason why I'm taking about 60 seconds is whilst checking the patient's heart rate, it allows me to be nice and close to his hand so I can have a look, see whether there's any clubbing or anything like that. I can check the capillary refill for his perfusion. Also allow me to have a look at his fingers to see whether there's any tar or nicotine standing, which might indicate some excessive smoking, smoking by the patient. Um, also having a look in the respiratory rate of the patient, um, it allows me to see whether he's tacky or bradypneic. It also allows me to see the rhythm of the patient's breathing, so I can see whether it's fast or slow or irregular or regular or anything like that. And it also allows me to see the quality of breathing that the patient's got, whether it's um, dull or shallow. And it also allows me to get a nice close look to see whether he's utilising any accessory muscles to breathe or ventilate. Um, so how are you feeling, Reese? Are you comfortable with the way that you're sitting right now? Yep. Yeah? <clears throat> cool, great, no worries. So I've got a heart rate of 60, a respirator of 12. And my peg pulse oximeter says 98% on room air. So we've got asthma, we're on Ventolin, um, shortness of breathing, cool. What I might do is, Reese, I might conduct a um, respiratory assessment yep. um, that involves uh, you taking your shirt off, if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. Um, a bit of touching and also allows me to sort of have a listen and also take your chest and sort of see what's going on so we can try and get to the bottom of this. You all right with that? Yep. Cool, I might just get you to remove your shirt for me if you can. Um, when the patient removes his shirt, it allows me to have a good look to see if there's any scars or bruising. Scars might indicate a previous chest surgery, a pacemaker, maybe some pleural effusion draining or something like that. Um, also, any bruising, I can have a look at the patient front and back. Um, I can also go through DCAP BTLS to see where there's any... Um, get Just to sort of see whether there's anything going on here. Um, what I might do is, I might just have a look here, I can see if there's anything going on. I might have a feel as well, so if you can just take a deep breath in and out for me. And again. This allows me to have a look to see whether we've got bilateral equal chest rise and stuff like that. I'm just going to palpate your chest to see whether you've got any pain or crepitus or tenderness. Do you have any pain there, Reese? Mm -hmm. Not where I'm touching. I might just check the back as well. No pain at the back there, Reese? No, it seems okay. On the sides? No, I'm all good. Okay, no worries. Let's check this side for you. All right, cool. Um, what I might do now is, Reese, I might just have a listen to your chest. I'm just going to be tapping on your chest. This is going to allow me to sort of see whether there's any dull sound. I'm just going to percuss your chest. Yep. Um, any hypersonance or anything like that, that sort of might indicate like a tension pneumothorax. So I'm just going to start at the start. Just checking both sides. Cool. Just expected a little bit of dullness over the heart, which is to be expected. 
Everything sounds good there, Reese. I'm just going to check the back now. How are you feeling there, Reese? All right? Yeah, I'm all right. It's a bit short of breath. A bit short of breath? Mm. So you had your puff puffer just before? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It made you feel a bit better? Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's good. I'm just going to have a listen to your chest here. I'm just going to start. I'm going to ask you to breathe. Just breathe in and out for me, just through your mouth. Yep. Deep breath in and out. Great. In and out. In and out. In and out. And again. Everything seems good here, Reese. So let's check again down here. Look at the lower lung fields. Great. I'm just gonna come around and check your back, Reese. Yep. Breathing in and out. Just going left to right, in and out. Me going left to right, so allowing me to sort of check all lung fields and keep consistent so I'm not missing anything. In and out. Nice. Just one more, Reese. All right, great, Reese. You can put your shirt back on now for me. Right. Um, just listening to your chest, everything seems alright. I just get a slight expiratory wheeze, which is quite normal for um, for asthma. Yep. Um, so just in regards to an asthma plan, now that I've gone through, I've just explained all your symptoms and everything that's come through to you. Um, I might just discuss an asthma plan with you now. Cool, I'd love that. Great.